Welcome to the lecture on riser design. In this lecture, we will discuss about the feeding distances. So, as we have understood that riser has to feed the liquid metal into the casting. Riser is also a casting in itself. So, riser will also solidify in the long run. As the casting solidifies, the riser will also solidify. Now, how the riser will behave? How I mean we have discussed about the shape and size of the riser by different methods. Now, when we are going to cast different type of castings or different shapes of castings and particularly when we are going for plate or bar shaped of castings, how to place these risers so that you know that these many risers will be enough for feeding the metal. So, riser placement is important. So, riser placement. Now, how many risers to be placed and where the risers to be placed? Where riser should be placed? and how many risers required these are important in the context that where it should be placed now first of all all these risers or runners or gates they are basically not desirable as far as the productivity is concerned so larger will be the size of the riser or larger will be the number of the risers, they are going to basically decrease the yield of the casting. So, we have to use the riser in an optimum way, so that wherever we put the riser, it should be used effectively. And in the sense that riser will have certain capacity to feed the liquid metal up to certain distance. I mean a riser if it is placed at some point, it can ensure that it can feed the liquid metal coming into a zone of suppose x inches or x centimeters. So, that will be the distance up to which the riser can contribute and that is known as riser contribution. Now, the thing is that where to, to, to be placed? So, first of all there are certain rules when we talk about non-uniform type of castings then we certainly see that riser should be placed somewhere which should be somewhat the chunky part. So, that there the maximum chances of shrinkage is there, but when we talk about the cross sections like either plates or bars then we need to know that where it should be placed. For that also if we try to know how many risers are required. So, for this we have to know that if we place one riser up to what distance it can feed. So, that distance is known as feeding distance. So, we will discuss about the feeding distances in case of risers and the geometries being either the plates or the bars. Now, let us discuss about the plates. So, what we tell that how many risers will certainly depend that what is the dimension of the longitudinal dimension of the product that is the casting and what is the basically distance up to which a riser can feed. Now, if we take this casting it is a plate type of a structure. So, in this case what we see is the distance which is shown this is basically the maximum distance which it can feed. So, that is 4.5 t, t is the thickness of this plate. So, this is the feeding distance for this plate. Now, in this case you have two things, one is the riser contribution and another is the edge contribution. Now, riser contribution means the riser will be able 
to see that there is not at all any shrinkage in this portion because up to this distance the riser will be feeding the liquid metal. Now, this is known as the edge contribution. So, we have understood that when we discussed about the directional and progressive solidification, then we had discussed that when the metal is poured and it will come towards the end, then at all these places where it is touching the walls, the solidification will start and it will move towards the inner part of the casting. So, that was basically a part of a type of solidification known as progressive solidification. So, at this point when this riser comes towards the end, in this end basically it has the end effect. So, this portion additionally is exposed to the mold wall. So, you will have solidification starting at that particular point as well as it will solidification will start from all these points. Now, because of this end point and because of this being the side from here the solidification will move and it will see that up to certain distance you cannot see it will ensure that there will not be any shrinkage effect shrinkage I mean problem. So, that is why the distance up to which because of this edge these shrinkages are not likely to come that is known as the edge contribution. So, what we see is that maximum distance which it can feed is composed of two parts one part is riser contribution another part is edge contribution. So, all together it comes out to be 4.52 out of which you have 2 t as the riser contribution and you have 2.5 t as the edge contribution. Now, let us see how many risers to be placed. Now, if we see that the distance is more than that you will have to place more number of risers. So, if suppose there is a large plate having large length and in that case if we place these two risers we know that this riser contribution is 2 t. So, between these two risers this riser will be able to feed up to this point. So, it will be 2 t and this riser also will have its riser own contribution that is 2 t. So, the maximum distance between the risers the placement of the two risers has to be the 2 t. So, this is how you try to place that many number of risers so that you see that there is no possibility of any shrinkage. If you have even larger you will have to accordingly decide the number of risers at different points certainly the size of the riser you will determine earlier and based on that you will say that at these locations the risers are required because this will be the riser contribution and towards the end where this portion will have end and towards that end you will have a space of 4.5 t because they are you will have certainly the riser contribution as well as the end contribution. Next is that when we use the chill. Now, what happens in many a cases that you have used the riser and you have certain riser contribution, but very small portion is left. Now, in that case placing a riser placing an additional riser is the solution, but it is not an economical solution. So, the practically what we do is we try to see that the end contribution what we are getting whether we can get somewhat more end contribution like sort of things. So, that some extra portion do not require the riser or there is no possibility of having any shrinkage in certain extra sections. So, basically chills are designed we have discussed about chills and chills are basically those materials which normally aid in directional solidification. So, what is there chill is basically a material of higher conductivity which extract heat at a faster rate. So, what we do is we use the chills. Now, if we use the chills these chills will be certainly giving certain extra space over which 
the chances of shrinkage will be less. So, in that case it is seen that in case of plate castings when we provide the chill this 4.5 T which was there earlier without the use of chill this was increased by 2 inches. So, this 2 inch is basically the contribution because of the presence of this chill. So, this is known as chill contribution and that is 4.5 T plus 2 inch is the maximum distance with a riser and also a chill with riser also has the riser contribution you will have the edge contribution and you will have 2 inches as the chill contribution. So, that is why that is how use of chill is instrumental and beneficial towards the end you can have the chill or in the even in between the casting suppose you have 2 risers and you see that some 2 or 4 inches are left. In those cases what we see here if you have 2 risers we are putting in these cases you are providing a chill in that case what we see is your 4 inches come out to be provided by this presence of chill. So, in that these are the formulas which basically can be applied to find what will be the effective feeding distance for the case of plates with or without the use of chill. Coming to the another kind of section that is bars. So, as we know that in the bars we have the all the cross sectional areas they are all effectively active in transmitting the heat from its surface. So, it has somewhat different feeding distance as compared to that of the riser. Now, in the case of bars when we see the maximum distance by a riser which is comprising of the riser contribution as well as the edge contribution it is coming out normally to be 6 root t. So, this is the 6 root t is the total distance maximum distance which is can cover because of the presence of riser as well as because of the edge. Out of that 1.5 t to 2 t is basically because of this is, this is 0.5 t. So, 0.5 t to 2 t is basically because of the riser contribution and 1.5 t to 2 t is because of this edge contribution. Now, in this case what we see that if we provide these two risers we see that this will be further multiplied. So, you have 0.5 t to 2 t and 0.5 to 2 t. So, both this 2 t will be on both the sides. So, basically it will vary from 1 t to 4 t. So, this you have two risers do two riser contribution will be seen at these two points. In the similar fashion once we go in the case of bars and we use the chill in those cases what we see is because of the chill you get T as the extra distance up to which the feeding is not required. So, this apart from the riser and the edge contribution this T will be the distance up to which the contribution will be provided by the chill and you do not require a riser up to that much distance to feed any extra material. And similarly if you have the use of chill in the central portion you will have T and T both side. So, you will have 2 T of extra distance up to which you do not require the riser to supply the metal that shrinkage calculation or shrinkage amount will be taken care of by the presence of the chill. So, this is how this feeding distances vary and based on the section or based on the dimension you can design the or you can think about the placement of risers at different positions. Now, let us discuss about the riser neck dimension. So, how we should design this riser. We know that once we calculate the size of the riser basically we certainly by default we feel that normally we make the cylindrical type of riser and we specify certain condition 
based on which like h equal to d or h equal to 2 d we get the diameter of the cylindrical riser as well as the height of the cylindrical riser. Now, this riser has to be connected to the casting. So, the riser where it connects to the casting at that place you must have the adequate design because anyway riser has to basically be cut off from the casting. So, that portion has to be typically in such a way that it does not pose much of the problem when we try to cut it. So, that portion where it is connected is known as the riser neck and there is particular design for this neck dimensions. So, let us see how this riser neck can be designed. So, for a general side riser what we see is this is a general type of side riser this is the diameter same as this this is d then this is this portion is known as the neck portion of the riser. So, this neck this is known as the length of the neck l n. So, l n is the length of the neck d is the diameter of the riser. l n is the length of the neck this portion is known as the neck of the riser where it is connected to the casting. So, that is known as the neck of the riser. So, this is length and this is known as the diameter of the riser and diameter of the neck. So, d n is diameter of the neck. So, what we see is this is diameter, this is diameter, this is length and this is the diameter of the neck. Now, first of all l n it is taken as maximum of d by 2. So, what we see is the length of this neck has to be taken maximum of d by 2 and the diameter of the neck it will be 1.2 l n plus 0.1 d. So, once we get this d it will be maximum of d by 2 and then once we get l n we get the d n. So, this way we design a general type of side riser for this particular casting. Next will be a type of top riser. So, in case of top riser the dimensions are slightly different. So, top round riser for top round riser So, top round riser lock looks like so this will be the length of the neck and this will be the diameter of the neck for a riser with we are discussing a riser with height equal to diameter. So, both these dimensions are equal to the diameter. Now, in this case again l n will be maximum of d by 2 and d n will be 
ln n plus 0 0.2 d. So, these are the two kinds of risers which are normally used in practice either side riser or a round riser that is a top riser. And in those cases once we know the diameter of the riser you can design this riser in this following way like you have the length of the riser, neck, diameter of the neck and this is uh, these are the diameters. So, based on these conditions you can design a particular riser. Now, we have feeding aids. What are the feeding aids? Now, feeding aids means that somehow those materials which should reduce the volume of the riser. You know feeding requirement is there feeding requirement is hardly 3 percent to 4 percent or 5 percent, but since riser is also a part of casting riser has to be larger than quite larger than that particular volume and larger will be the volume of the riser. So, larger will be or smaller will be the productivity or smaller will be the yield of the product. So, that is why we try to minimize the size of the riser. Now, what are the challenges in a riser? So, in a riser what we had discussed that in normal riser basically when it feeds the metal, the metal is experiencing the pressure one is the atmospheric pressure and another is the gravity force. So, under these two forces the riser is basically feeding the liquid metal. So, one is atmospheric pressure and the another is gravity. So, because of these two forces the riser is able to feed the liquid metal into the casting. Now, the thing is that if this surface is becoming solid, if this surface becomes solid, it solidifies, it does not remain in liquid state. In that case, the atmospheric pressure will stop working. And because of given gravity, since there will be formation of vacuum, so, feeding will be difficult. In those cases what we do is if we try or suppose in normal cases if you take a certain volume of the riser to be sufficient for feeding certain casting, how to see that it is basically you can reduce the size of that particular riser. The thing is if you can induce a condition because of which the liquid metal into this riser remains in liquid state for larger duration of time, then in that case you can think of having a riser of a smaller size. So, these feeding aids are the ones which are used for keeping riser in the liquid for more time. So, the compounds which are used to keep this liquid metal into it in liquid state for larger amount of time that is known as feeding aids. Now, for that either you can use the exothermic material at the top. So, when you use the exothermic material at the top they basically react and they produce the heat and because of that heat this portion remains hot for longer duration of time. So, once the heat is generated then that will be help in converting if suppose the temperature has dropped little bit if there will be exothermic reaction that will increase the temperature locally and that will further convert the solid state into the liquid state. So, once you use the exothermic reaction at this point now that can be done by adding certain compounds like Fe 2 O 3 plus A L thermit mixture which is there if you use that the reaction between them is an exothermic reaction. So, this mixture is 
put here and then you will see that they react they release the heat and because of that heat re released this material this portion remains in liquid state for larger amount of time. Similarly, you can also do the covering you can basically cover it or you can basically make it adiabatic there is no heat transfer. So, you can use some insulators you can also use the insulators. So, once you use the insulators basically they will stop heat transfer from that surface. So, that also helps in basically reducing the heat transfer to the surroundings and the riser will have the liquid state for larger duration of time. So, these are the two ways the use of the thermic materials and the use of insulators like so in that process we use either the graphite or charcoal powders you may use the rice hulls which they are basically they are the compounds carbonaceous compounds also they react and they keep that in liquid state for larger amount of time mixture of iron oxide and aluminum powder that is the mixture which is used as uh, the compound which reacts and releases a large amount of heat. So, this way your now for that what happens they will effectively reduce the size of the riser. So, ultimately that helps in reducing the size of the riser which otherwise would have been larger. So, if you do certain means by which the liquid will be for larger amount of time in liquid state then in that case you can reduce the size of the riser and that will improve the productivity of the process casting process. So, these are known as feeding aids. So, by and large we have to see that how can we minimize the number of risers also how can we reduce the volume of the metal in the riser these are our main aims and we should see that how can we move towards having the towards increasing the productivity of this whole casting process. Thank you.